everybody, this is Caitlin with the Twinsburg Library here for another awesome virtual vacation to South Korea. So first we're going to read a story about South Korea, and then I'm going to show you how to make your very own South Korean board game, which is super cool. And then we're going to make some jumukbap, which are just rice balls, and so those are super easy too. So we're going to have all kinds of fun. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to read Living in South Korea by Chloe Perkins. Let's see. 안녕하세요, yo. That's how we say hello in South Korea. My name is Minjun. I live in South Korea. South Korea is a country in Asia where more than 50 million people live, including me. South Korea is part of the Korean Peninsula. The Yellow Sea is to the west, the Sea of Japan is to the east, and the Sea of China and the East China Sea is to the south. To the north, South Korea borders the country of North Korea. More than 3,000 islands are part of South Korea, too. Two of the islands have volcanoes. 70% of the land in South Korea is mountains. The Sobayak Mountains are in the south. The biggest mountain range in the north is the Taibaek Mountain. I love going on vacation to the mountains with my family. Snowboarding is my favorite sport. There are lots of great places to ski and snowboard around Seoul. Seoul is the capital and biggest city in South Korea. The city is more than 2,000 years old. Near Seoul is Incheon. It is a busy harbor and transportation system make the city a popular hub for business. Many people call Busan the summer capital. This city is a great vacation spot with beautiful beaches. Daegu is the center for fashion. People from all over the world come to this city for the Daegu Fashion Fair. I live in an apartment in Seoul with my mom, dad, and twin brother, Jihu. My parents both work for a cell phone company. They design programs that are used in phones around the world. Jihu likes to play Baduk. Baduk is a game of strategy. He is even on a Baduk team. Each morning I wake up, take a shower, and get dressed. Then it is breakfast time. We start with bean sprout soup. Next we eat white rice with steamed vegetables. Then our parents drive us to school on their way to work. School starts at 9 each morning. There are 27 kids in our class. We learn Korean, math, English, civics, and science. Civics helps us understand our government and how to be good citizens. We have a special visitor today. She is a historian who studies Korea's exciting past. Would you like to hear about it? People have been living in South, in South Korea for more than 10,000 years. The first dwellers came from the Central Asia. Back then, they had adapted Chinese farming methods and a writing system based on Chinese characters. For centuries, Chinese ar armies ruled this land and its many small kingdoms. At times, different kingdoms were in control. But in 668, the Silla Kingdom united the whole peninsula for the first time ever. Art and nature were highly respected during this time. Artists would, would bring themes of nature into their work, whether it was fine gold jewelry or simple pottery. But by 935, the kingdom broke apart again. Over the next thousand years, rulers came and went. Some were from the peninsula, some invaded from other countries. In 1910, Japan took control of the peninsula and would stay in charge until the end of World War II. When Japan was defeated in the war, Korea was split into two zones. The United States of America controlled the south, and the Soviet Union controlled the north. The two zones were supposed to be reunited. Instead, the Korean War broke out. It lasted from 1950 to 1953. Nothing was resolved. South Korea and North Korea are still divided today by a strip of land. It is two miles wide and cuts across the peninsula. But in 1988, President Kim Dae-jung of South Korea started the Sunshine Policy because he wanted his country and North Korea to work together. In 2000, the leaders of the two countries met. In the years since, new leaders have not been able to settle the differences. After, after our guest leaves, it is time for lunch. Today, we are having kimchi bokumbap. Kimchi bokumbap is a fried rice and pickled vegetables. We also eat watermelon. Next, we go to the science lab. 
we are studying the water cycle. Our class made terrariums. We observe how the temperature affects the water. The water cycle is very important to South Korea's forests. Every day I go to Taekwondo lessons after school. We jump and spin around. We learn how to control our movements. We are always kind and respectful to one another. Back home, Juhu and I do our homework. And then it is time for dinner. We eat beef and radish soup with rice. After dinner, Mom makes uh, song yi, song pion, uh, song pion, a rice cake shaped like half moons. They are filled with sweet seeds, nuts, and or paste. Jihu and I help make them for Chuseok. Chuseok is a harvest festival. No one works or goes to school. We celebrate it for three days every autumn when the moon is full. Tomorrow morning, we will pay our respects to our ancestors. We will also play games. And then we will eat dinner with our family. We will have spicy soup, grilled meat, rice, and vegetable pancakes. And, of course, we will eat a lot of song pignon. Tonight, though, our parents surprise us with an early gift. We get a book about Olympic athletes from around the world. I love reading about all the athletes. My favorite chapter is about winter sports. Cannot wait for the Winter Olympics to come to South Korea. My family has tickets for the snowboarding event. Maybe I will be in the Olympics someday. Would you like to visit South Korea? Yeah, and South Korea is super cool. So now, the well, first thing we're going to do is make our little snack. So we're going to make Yongbap, which is just a rice ball. So I'm not going to show you how to make rice because it's pretty easy. Just follow the instructions on the container. You can use white short rice, which is also called sushi rice, which is also called sticky rice. So it's really messy. So I already made some right here just follow the directions on the on the container that you use now the koreans like to put them into a ball that's what jim pop pop so i made one right here and that's already dried and i can hold it without making too much of a mess but when the rice is fresh it's super messy so there are two ways you can do that you can default there's actually three so if you have food gloves you can use those um, you can coat your hands in oil, which will help not stick to your hands, but that's kind of gross. What I like to do is I like using uh, just some uh, rumble wrap or some clear plastic wrap. And all you have to do is you can take a little bit of your rice and you plop it right in the center right there. And then you can gather it all together and then you twist it and smush it into a ball. That way, you can still make it into a ball without getting it all over your hands, which is pretty gross. Now, if you want, you can decorate it with seaweed, which is traditional, or with different spices. You can even shred up a little of steamed carrot or broccoli and mix it in with your rice, which is delicious. You can, once you have your balls, you can dip them in soy sauce, which is also fantastic. And see now, I've got a nice ball. Another really fun thing you can do that's becoming a little bit more contemporary, I mean, it's really popular right now, is you can use a cookie cutter and make all kinds of shapes. So I'm going to use my music note cookie nut cutter. And you're going to put that down on your plate, and then we're going to take a little bit of our rice, and we're going to put it in there. And it's a little hard because I've got the really, really thin part at the top of my music note. This is, this is actually an eighth note. And we're going to push it in there, and then, it's still, you can see how sticky it is, it's stuck on my fingers, oh! And then, once you have enough rice in there, you're going to, oh, it's really sticky to my fingers, put our plastic wrap out over it, you can take the back of a spoon, or I'm just going to use my popsicle stick, and you're going to push it down so that all the rice sticks together, like that, and then, we're going to slowly lift it up and push it down while you're doing that. And then you will have your rice in all kinds of fun shapes. Look at that. We've got a music note. And you can do, if you have really cool cookie cutters, you can use whatever shape you want. And it'll make your dinner a little extra special. All right. So now, after, an, after dinner fun, we're going to make our board game. So all you need for this board game is a piece of paper, uh, something where you can mark your spots and markers, and most importantly, you need whoop, 
some sticks. So if you have popsicle sticks, those work great. Or you can just find sticks outside if you want. But all you have to do is this is a Korean game called Yuk Nori, and this is what it originally looks like. So see, they have their sticks, and one side is flat, the other side is round, and it has markings on it. That's how you know when to move your pieces. So you're going to take your five popsicle sticks, and you're going to color only on one side. So what you can do is, I'm just going to do real squiggles on mine, so you can tell the difference. But you can make them full with polka dots, or stars or however you want. This is your design in your own board game. You can even, if you've got the really big, thick popsicle sticks, you can even draw characters on there. So you can see that one side has a squiggle on it and one side is blank. So as long as you can tell the difference between the sides. Then we have to draw our board game, our actual board. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a, a circle in the center or it can be really whatever you want. You just have to make a marking in the center and on at the corners like that. And you're going to make one corner special because that's going to be the start. So I'm just going to put a star there. So that's going to be the starting and the end point. And then we're going to add some more circles around the end. So I'm going to do about four circles between two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Not perfect. And then we're going to do a couple more, like there's a line going across. Two. One, two, one, two. So there you go. That is a Ute Glory board game. It looks just like that. And again, you don't have to use circles. You can do stars. You can make it look however you want. Then, you know, I'm going to use the caps on my marker since I forgot to grab my pom-poms. And these are going to be my pieces real quick. So in order to play, you have your pieces for one per, per person. You're going to put it on the start. The goal is to get all the way around the end. And if you land on one of the corner pieces, that means you can take the shortcut and go through here. But you have to land exactly on the corner in order to be able to move. And once you move here, if you happen to land on this one, you'll win really fast and you go all the way to the back to the beginning or you would have to go through that way. So what I'm going to show you is how you move. Normally when you play a board game, you spin the spinner or you roll the dice but, or pick the card. This, you get to throw the sticks, which is fun. So you're going to take all your sticks and you're going to throw them up. So I have five blank things. So five blank ones means I would move five spots. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. So now we're going to do our, I'm going to play against myself, so I'm going to do the purple player. And I'm going to take my sticks, I'm going to throw them up. Now for this throw, I only have one colored piece. So that means I move one space. I'll do it one more time and show you. So we're going to take the sticks, we're going to throw it. I got one again, like that. And you keep going. So if you have one colored space, you move one, or there's only supposed to be four uh, sticks. So you move one color piece, you move one space. If you get two heads up, you move two spaces. Three, you move three spaces. Four, you move four spaces. And then if all four of your pieces are upside down, then you get to move five spaces. So it's super easy. I'm going to hold up the game rules right here so you guys can see it. You can pause the video if you end up actually playing, which I highly suggest because it's a blast. And I hope you guys enjoyed it and have fun playing Yute Marie and making Juke Pum Pop. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.